Tonight in Cuba, long lines of cars wrapping round gas stations. Many waiting for hours to fill up their tanks, growing nervous ahead of an unpopular proposal to spike gas prices. Nadie sabe ahora mismo cuando esto pase qué es lo que puede suceder después con los con los nuevos precios y y hasta dónde vamos a llegar. The Cuban government announcing last December plans to increase the price of gasoline 500%. One of a series of measures aimed at getting the deficit under control. The government owns every gas station on the island and says subsidies are no longer possible, adding to an already cratering economy. The hike was scheduled for today, but in a last-minute twist, officials delaying the measure because they were hit with a cyber attack. In this decision, the occurrence of an incident of cyber security in the informatic systems for commercialization de los combustibles. Despite the delay, most worry higher prices are inevitable. Se puede demorar una semana, se puede demorar un mes, pero va a afectar el nivel adquisitivo de la población que ya de por sí está deteriorado. Under the new proposed fuel spike, filling a tank of gas would cost at least 4,500 pesos. At a time when the average salary is about 4,000 pesos, that's $14, forcing people to make the decision between gas or all other life expenses. No solo es que ya yo prevengo que van a subir la inflación en un dos dígitos y tres dígitos, sino que ya pasó. O sea, ya está pasando las últimas semanas que muchos de los productos que se estaban vendiendo se le han ido subiendo poco a poco el precio. For decades, oil from Venezuela has been a lifeline for Cuba's economy. But ever since that country's economic demise, gas deliveries have reduced sharply, leaving the island to rely on fuel shipments from Russia and Mexico. But now, residents are worried about an escalating crisis. Over the last two years in Cuba, the price of a carton of eggs like this has more than tripled. Eggs are now so expensive that an average state salary doesn't even stretch to buy two carton of eggs a month. Y los precios de la vianda y eso, eso son cosas que sí van a subir por el tema del petróleo. Raul Silva, owner of a restaurant and food store, worries that more taxes on fledgling private companies will stymie any economic recovery. No sé por qué se toman esas medidas que uno de, de antemano sabe que va a crear un, un, un impacto de decrecimiento. Over the last two years, Cubans have emigrated from the island in record numbers. In the short term, at least, price hikes could add more fuel to the fire. Ed Augustin joins us tonight from Havana. Ed, things there have been really bad in Cuba for a really long time, but this new wave of economic depression is reminiscent of the special period in the 90s after the collapse of the Soviet Union. What is the government saying and are demonstrations being discussed? The government's line is that this is the necessary medicine. You know, Cuba has a hugely uh, inefficient, inefficient economy, and it heavily subsidizes things like uh, gasoline, electricity, and water. And the government's broke, and it has been for many years. That's one of the reasons there are so many power cuts. That's one of the reasons that salaries are so tiny. So their line is that in the short term, it's going to be painful for the population, but that this adjustment in the medium term is going to lead the economy back to growth, that they argue is going to ultimately be better for Cubans. But having said that, we're talking about massive price rises here. You know, we're not talking about doubling petrol prices that would be massive in, in and of itself. We're talking about a 500 percent increase. Now, that's just not that that's not only leading to angry motorists, that's leading to widespread anxiety across Cuba about about how those price rises will factor in across the economy to lead to higher food prices, for an example. Um, and people are nervous about it. It's a tense time here. I think the population is anxious. The government also is rather anxious. Having said that, this journalist here speaking to you now hasn't heard at this point any suggestions of demonstrations. And Ed, while I have you there, I, I am curious the timing of this cyber attack. Do we know any more about the, the motives behind it or, or which country or actors may be behind it? We don't know uh, anything much. Um, the government announced that there has been a cyber attack. Um, we know, looking at the history of the United States and Cuba, that there have been um, various attempts to destabilize Cuba politically and economically um, from the United States, both by organ organs like the CIA. You have to go back to the 60s to find examples like that. And there are also about $20 million a year that circulate um, to uh, apparently uh, promote democracy here. And historically, a lot of that money has been used uh, to try and destabilize the government too. But there's no um, allegation by the government about who it might be. In fact, just kind of a gossiping with uh, a, a friend of mine earlier, there was um, suggestion, at least um, an idea, that maybe this is kind of a convenient excuse for the government to perhaps back down or put off these price rises, which they know are going to cause a lot of popular discontent.
Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.